So we spent some time um, in Illustrator trying to create reference lines and labels and water flow patterns and so on. Um, we worked on the dark background artboard. Let's just kind of pretend that we also did that for the white background artboard. Now we're ready to go. So uh, we can save this file as diagram underscore artboard and click save. Now we um, want to make sure that it, it's checked for the include link files and uh, create PDF compatible file. Um, and then we can go back to InDesign. So when we go back to InDesign, um, we can see how there is an exclamation mark, yellow sign that shows up for this file that we were working on. So that means uh, the file has been updated and what we're currently seeing in InDesign does not reflect the most current version. Um, so typically we can just click on this update link icon right here. However, we're still not seeing uh, the dark background. It's because um, there were two artboards and we inserted the one that had a lighter background. So um, in this case, we want to go to relink and then choose the file again. And um, as you can see, if we click on layers, it's allowing us to see all the new layers we created in Illustrator. And then when we go to general, if we go to preview page, we can navigate to the dark background. So this is gonna make sure that what we inserted is indeed the right artboard. If we select range, it's gonna insert both artboards. And typically when you click for the first time, it's gonna show you the first artboard. And that's why we only had a white background uh, artboard inserted. So you have to insert it twice to get the white and the blue uh, backgrounds. So in this case, let's just go to the preview page to make sure that we only insert one artboard. And that is the one we're currently previewing, which is the dark background page. Um, so now we have it uh, loaded right here. And um, since this one is from a different Illustrator file that we use to sort of compare the different workflows, uh, we can now basically just delete it. We can just hit delete to uh, get rid of it. And then we can choose this um, artboard we just inserted and grab it to be right next to uh, your rendering and see how it works together um, with your rendering. And then if you want to uh, insert more text, you can uh, sort of create a window, drag it from the left to the right, and then it's going to allow you to, you know, type in a bunch of text over here. Um, we'll have to kind of zoom in to see the text itself, and it, it just looks really small right now. You can select the text and right click um, to choose the, the font type, to choose the font size, say I want to make it uh, a lot bigger. Okay, and then I can also, like before, I can also uh, select the text and then um, click on the white color here. So go to color, And then um, we can go all the way to the white color. Now you can see we just create a white color. And then maybe you don't want to have it go all the way to the edge. You can bring that text box down further. Um, so, so you can add more text um, to your overall board if you want to. Um, and uh, now we are ready to, let's just say you finish up adding text or anything else you want to add here. Now we're ready to um, save this file. Let's just save a copy and just call, call that your portfolio, first name. And then um, you guys were asked to submit the native Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign file. The best way to 
make sure you don't uh, forget about any of the files that are linked to this file um, is to go to file package um, so this is gonna allow you to make sure that you have you know all the files accounted for nothing is falling through the cracks you know some of the font styles um, might all need to be packed together so that when you open it on someone else's computer you still have the same fonts um, so if you can use the package command uh, to, to sort of create a folder with all the files you need um, that will be the best option so another way to go uh, is to create a PDF file uh, it's handy for people with really slow internet connection um, it might take you a long time to upload all the native formats um, so in this case we can go to print and then um, we can navigate to a printer called Adobe PDF. Um, and then if you have set up uh, you know, the printing format before, you'll be able to choose it as a preset. Um, in our case, we have not set it up before, so we have to start from scratch. So let's click on Setup. And we know that the page is 11 by 17. It's landscape orientation. Um, and um, everything looks good right now. We can just click Setup um say okay yep and click on adobe pdf um we can save this preset let's just say you want to make a portfolio as your preset then that way next time you can select your preset so that you don't have to start from scratch again um and the paper size can be defined by your driver or you can be um really specific about the paper size. So in our case, it's 11 by 17. Um, and then let's click on print. And then click on portfolio and click save. Now my PDF is showing up. Um, it's showing me two separate pages. However, I can go to view here and page display is gonna allow me to do two page view. Um, this is when I'm able to see both of them just opposed together. So if you want to actually make sure that people have no option of viewing it as a single page, say if your layout kind of bleeds over the normal page border, um, when you're printing, you want to set a custom page, which is 11 by 34 instead of 11 by 17. And then when people um, open your PDF file for the first time, they're going to have to see this, you know, double page layout as one single page. Um, so there will be no opportunity for them to view it separately. So in case you have a layout that's not flexible enough for viewing, as a single page, um, you might want to pursue that option. All right, so um, this is our final video for the semester. I hope you enjoyed the semester and please do keep me posted if you have any question or any troubleshooting. Good luck with finishing up um, the semester. I will miss you all.